Okay, we're getting some smoke billowing out of here as it burns off the rest of that material. All right, today on Startup Chuck, we're printing cowbells. And then the great words of Christopher Walken, I got a fever and the only prescription is more cowbell. So, this cowbell is printed out of PPS CF material. Sounds just like metal. But it took me a while to get to this bell. I printed a bunch of different types. I had to mod my printer to get it to print hot enough because it had to go up to 330 or more. And so this is the journey of basically trying to figure out how to print the best cowbell. So I got myself a roll of PPS carbon fiber and first step I had to do is basically I needed to figure out the flow rate and the temperature at which to print it. So I first printed a temp tower and I was able to figure out essentially at what temp it would actually combine and fuse together and not delaminate. And as much as I hoped it was 320 degrees so I could print it on my Centuri carbon printer, it was actually 330 degrees. So the first thing I had to do is modify my old Monoprice Maker Select 3D printer. Now this thing's like 10 years old. All right, so I got the BL Touch Probe on there and the fan, and I already had an all metal hot end. And uh, this is the DIII cooler. I ended up putting this uh, awesome little Noctura fan on there. But now, I want to get this thing hot. I want to be able to get this thing up to 420C. So we're going to rebuild the heater block so that it can uh, have a PT1000 thermo thermistor in there and then also um, a 65 watt heater. And then this thing will be cooking. But for now, I need to flash the screen and the Marlin firmware on here so that way it will accept the new thermistor and allow it to go up to 420 C. Um, if that works, maybe we can print some, some Teflon or something like that. We'll find out. Here I am updating the firmware and I needed a USB cable that was so long, it went 20 feet over to my computer, but it appears like it's working. There we go. Alrighty, let's solder this. It's not heating up. I'm gonna help it. This is how old soldering irons used to work. You used to just heat them up with a torch or with a flame and the thermal mass would help you. better. Now I actually don't want these cables low here because it's gonna um, heat them up and melt them. So I'm gonna keep them up high. Everything plastic away from that heating block because it is going to be getting hot. So it turns out I mounted this thing backwards, so now I gotta spin this whole thing around, which is annoying. Alright, so we are heating right now up to 300 degrees, and it's, it's doing pretty good. I mean, it hit it and had some room to spare. This is a much faster heating than before. So this is PID tuning right now for 300 degrees, and then we're gonna try hotter. All right, so I'm heating my bed up right now to 100C to do the PID calibration. And one thing I need to look out for is the fact that the magnet that holds the steel sheet on might demagnetize around so above 75C. We're going to find out. Right now it's at 83. It's definitely getting a little less strong, but seems fine overall. All right, well, I can't believe it. This thing actually hit 100C. Uh, with, you know, it's 
eight year old heater, it did just fine. So it's sitting here at 100 C, it's doing its PID calibration. It still has, oh, hot. Still has uh, some magnetic property to it, so that's a big win. Um, either way, so for me printing the uh, PA6 carbon fiber so far, I know I can at least hit 300. I haven't tried to actually print yet at uh, 350. And I can hit 100C on the bed right now. So I'm pretty happy so far I'm teaching this old dog new tricks. So we're going to see how the rest of it goes. All right, we are in uncharted territory here. It is cranking up to 325 degrees. And we are going to test print with this uh, PA6CF. Man, it is just cooking up there. No problem getting that temp. But funny thing is, the graph display doesn't go any higher. Oh well. Alright, so it's doing its test print line. That looks pretty good. Oh yeah, that's looking real good. Well, as much fun as this is, I am starting to get a little bit of a headache because I need some clean air so we're gonna put a carbon filter in this air cleaner here and uh, let it clean the air for us a little bit all right so I had tested this guy out and I was able to get um, its print the PPS or the PA6 carbon fiber here and uh, it, I didn't have any glue down so it came off the bed but I want to see how hot I can get this thing now so I did a Teflon part in here and it's gonna heat the bed up to 420 I mean it's, it's cranking if it hits about oh, 180 I'm gonna remove the filament oh I can't get this stuff out Oh well, it's just going to be in there. 292, 297, 299, 350. There we go, got it out. Alright, I'm starting to see some smoke or something. Yeah, alright, well, I hit 415, but Things are definitely smoking now, so I'm going to stop this. Right, so I am printing this again. I put some bed weld down. Hopefully it will stick. We're going to find out. It's at 325C and 110 for the bed. Overall, I'm pretty happy that it can hit those temperatures. It has no problem getting hot enough. Like, it could go to, I mean, 500 if it wanted to. That 65 watt heater is like a dream. It heats up so much faster. And then I'm just surprised the bed even could get to 110. That's amazing. Either way, uh, I'm pretty excited. I can now print PPS carbon fiber, PA6 carbon fiber, and as long as I keep this nice carbon scrubbing fan on, uh, hopefully it'll keep the odor down in the room. Definitely don't want to be in here long term. Who knows what it's spewing out, but right now at least the activated charcoal filter will help with uh, any of the majority of the bad stuff. All right, this thing's ramping up to 420. I've removed the fan, a blower housing around the nozzle, because that is definitely going to melt as it hits 420. Originally, the first time, I didn't do that, and it started basically pumping out of the stick. So, either way, it's heating up. We're going to let it get crazy hot. It's like almost 800 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, we're set at 420. Now that I have my printer at 330C, I was able to start doing a temp tower and I was able to figure out how basically, uh, what temperature was ideal for adhesion. Then I printed out a flow rate test and figured out the max flow rate I could print with. And from there, I just started printing uh, like coupons. And I ended up with a bunch of these little coupons. These little coupons, when you 
drop them sounds super good. And so with that, I was like, man, what could I print that, you know, could sound as super neat with a stiff material? I remembered that they had a demo bell uh, for this PPSCF material when I went to the 3D printing trade show. And so first I tried to make my own bell. Now this bell is based on a German bell design. And there's actually like French, German, English bell designs, all those sorts of things. And so I took an image of a bell design. I then put it into uh, on shape, I trace it, and I ended up with this. And then from here, this is a German one, I ended up shelling it out and printing it as an invase mode. And what I found out was, it sounds okay, but it's kind of tinny. It doesn't sound quite good enough. So one thing I learned is that with high bed temperatures, the bed was actually peeling off the magnet. In order to keep the bed from coming up, is I added these binder clips, and that is keeping the bed from uh, peeling up with the tension of the shrinkage of the plastic. You're also gonna wanna make sure you have a filament dryer, just like this one I got. It really makes a difference when you're printing. So I then went and said, okay, that's, that's all right, but not as good as I wanted. And I found somebody else's bell design. And so this is one that's a print and place bell design. And it sounds, I don't know, okay. Not quite as good as I wanted it to. A little disappointing. I mean, really you want it to be like this, right? So this is a metal bell. And then I found the PPSCF demo bell. And this one has a clacker, it only goes two directions. Sounds pretty good, right? All right, pretty good, pretty happy with that. But it's no cowbell. So some things I figured out in making bell shapes. One, the single wall thickness, I had a 0.6 nozzle, was not enough. So this being 0.6 and 0.8 thick really wasn't quite what I was looking for. Um, if I snap it, I get 0.66 millimeters. Um, the PPSCF bell, this is like a bring out your dad or um, Salvation Army Christmas bell. And that one is 1.54 millimeter. So a little thicker, this is about two layers. And then I wanted this to be three layers. And so it ended up at about 1.73 millimeters. And this guy, I cannot believe that this thing is made of plastic. It sounds just like metal. I mean, you can play this as a musical instrument. It's just absolutely amazing. So if you need more cowbell, I got you covered. So I'm gonna post the files for this cowbell uh, and you can go in and you can modify it. I actually shrunk this one to 60% of the file I had and then printed it out. Uh, used a M6 bolt on the inside. And yeah, print it out, give it a try. Uh, if you like what you saw, please like and subscribe. I need subscribers. Hope you guys like what you saw. And uh, hope to catch you next time. Thanks. Where can I hit this on my head? My body still makes noise. My ear's soft. Maybe I should make one of those fish that you like scrape. I don't know what those are called. Scrapey fish? There's got to be a, a, a thing they're called in the musical instrument. I always just call it a, a fish. But if you know what that instrument's called, leave me a message in the chats. I want to know what that scrapey fish instrument is called.